Shannon Hanley, and I'm so glad to be worshiping with you this morning. This morning, we are pleased to invite Pastor Diane to worship with us as Pastor Shannon is in Indianapolis at the UCC General Synod, representing us and learning all about what the UCC is up to. I have several announcements I'd like to share. The first is that today is the last day for the Strength in the Church offering. Strength in the Church helps support additional programs uh, through the United Church of Christ, and there are offering envelopes on the table outside in the Family Center. The Youth Boundary Waters trip starts Friday. That's for students 6th through 12th grade, and they are ready to go. Hopefully they've been packing, wearing their boots, uh, and getting ready for that. Today we will have a special time during worship to celebrate their trip. Uh, July 16, I want you to take notice that we will be having a summer cleanup day to help get the building looking really good before the block party. Lots of opportunities, something that you can do, I promise. Um, but we just want to make sure it looks really great in here for the July 18th block party. That's the big party we're having to celebrate that Senior Neighbors and Gilda's Club is here, partnering with our other partners, Little Pride, Open Table, the church, of course, um, and Women's Club. So um, please plan to attend that. There's hot dogs, there's carnival stuff. It'll be a good time. And then July 23rd, we will have youth group again after you're back from your trip. Make sure that if you are young people that you sign up, there's, a, there's a, some sheets in the back to sign up to be acolyte, to sign up to pass the um, Offering plates, there is a sign-up sheet in the back if you have not already given me your form. Last week, we approved our, we had our annual meeting and we approved our budget and reviewed our yearly reports. Um, we did elect our slate of officers. So we have co-moderators, Teresa Beecham and Roland Hoxbergen. I'm gonna learn it sometime, Roland, I promise. Our clerk is Stacy Everett, our treasurer is David Blakely, and then the historian will be Pastor Shannon. Uh, we did approve the budget. There are copies of the budget and the yearly reports out on the table. You could also see Teresa, Roland, or Dave if you need any information. Uh, one final thing before I get to the big announcement, and that is this morning we are transitioning to glass communion cups. So you might get a plastic cup, you might get a glass one, know the difference. Some break, some don't, <laughs> okay? All right, so we're trying to reuse those. And then the big announcement for today is that there is a big birthday coming up this week. We just wanna mention that it's Julie's birthday on July 4th, July 4th, baby. So happy birthday to Julie Condon. She's 29 is what I heard. All right, and me too. <laughs> We're all 29. Okay, um, at this time, I would like to invite you all to take a time to meet and greet those around you by passing the peace of Christ. You may do so with a handshake, a hug, whatever works for you, a fist bump if that's best, but pass the peace of Christ. May God be with you. Okay, I was wrong. We're not having communion today. So don't worry about your cups. It'll be next week. Because we don't have the litany. We had, there was a swap in the 
worship because we're having the sending off of our Boundary Waters people. So that's my fault. I apologize. Will you join me now in the call to worship? God, who has called us into fellowship with one another, is faithful. God is faithful in keeping the covenant of love that binds us together. God's faithfulness reaches to the skies and continues for generations. Therefore, we praise the faithfulness of our Lord revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Together, we lift our voices and pour out our praise to you alone. Great is your faithfulness, Lord God, through all generations. I guess I messed that up too, huh? Now we're supposed to pass the peace. All right, well, it is what it is. We're now going to sing hymn number eight. Woohoo! Do it again. I know you guys would like that, but we'll be here all day. Number eight. If you are going on the Boundary Waters trip, though, I'd like you to come up here up front with me. This is leaders and young people. Not everyone could be here today. We've got some people camping. We've got some people that live far away. But we wanted to call up those that were available. We have 26 people going on this trip. That's a lot. That's three teams. You're not allowed to have more than nine people together anywhere in the Boundary Water, so we have three teams of people going. We, I, I do want to call out our leaders. That would be Justin Ains, Melissa Hanley, Katie Mork, Kevin Hollimans, Jared Uzarski, Brooke Uzarski, Crystal Blakely, and Emily Elms. So three of those people went on this trip. The, three of those leaders went on this trip for the very first time as teenagers your age or younger. Cool, right? All right. So at this time, we would like to celebrate you. We want to send you off with our blessing. We know that you are representing us uh, as you go into the world, as you interact with people at gas stations and at outfitters. You are a representative of us, and we appreciate that, and we are glad for you. So at this time, oh, did you guys bring your papers? Grab your papers. 
You can share. You guys have some? Enough to share? Okay, so let's join in this litany. This will be for all of us together. I will read the one part and everyone else can join with the many part. For the miracle of creation in all its infinite diversity and splendor, we give thanks to the one who sustains us. We give thanks that we too are part of creation. We pray that we might remember our status as children of God through our participation in the circle of life. For the rhythm of a paddle gently striking the water, the morning mist giving away to reveal the majesty of the wilderness, the radiance of sunset, the sparkle on the water, and the dance of the dragonflies. We praise you. God, we know that we have too often isolated ourselves from the very things that bring us a connection to you. We pray for the wisdom to seek out places such as Jesus did, the mountain, the plain, the lakeshore, and the wilderness. We pray that we might remember that Christ is present in ourselves and in one another. In the sending of our participants, we pray for the patience of our leaders, the openness of our students' hearts, the strength of our all participants' bodies, and for all those that will long for the participants' return. We give thanks for the sacrifices families and participants have made to make this trip possible, for all the supporters who gave time and money and prayers. We give thanks for the boundary waters, the wilderness, and for all sacred places that give us renewal and help us to deeply know you and others on the journey. Gracious God, we pray for our participants and all other trips, camps, retreat centers, and sacred places in the world whose mission is to bring people to an awareness of your presence and peace. We pray for each participant that they might have a safe and meaningful experience, a season of strengthening faith, and a whole lot of fun. We thank you for the astoundingly beautiful place infused with divinity. Bless this trip with grace, abundance, safety, connection, and love. And God, please help each of us to live out that which the Boundary Waters Community Building Trip is designed to teach, to love you, to love ourselves, and to love one another. Amen. All right, thank you. Young people can stay up here because Deidre, Claire, come on, don't leave me alone. We got a Boundary Waters activity we're gonna try here. All right, so grab this big rope here. The bear rope, the big one, grab the big one. Somebody grab this little one, find the end, find the end. Felix, come on over here to the center, okay? Find the end and put it through here. So in the Boundary Waters, there are black bears. You do have to tie up your food or they will eat it. Can you stick that through there? I don't know if the other end is better. So we have to tie up our food. It has to be how high off the ground? Anybody remember? Anyone who's been before? Eight's not tall enough. 10 feet's not tall enough. 12 feet high. And how far from a tree? Six to eight feet, okay? All right, so I need some of you on this side and some of you on that side. Claire, we worked on this this morning. Felix and I already untangled it. I did it. You can untangle it. It's got to get untangled. All right, so we have to do that every day. That's one of our least favorite jobs, I think, hanging up the bear rope. <laughs> Depends on who your team is this year. You might be the best thrower. All right. Sorry. A knot just won't work for us. We're getting there. So, Liam, describe how you hang the mirror. Here, can you take this? Describe how you do it. What happens? What do we have to do? Um. Go. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. So I was trying to think of like what. Go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how do you hang the bear rope, Jack? How do you hang the bear rope? 
First, you break um, six Nalgene's, trying to throw it up into the tree. Um, and then you get it on one tree, and then you spend another half an hour trying to get it on the other tree. Um, and then the, one, the first tree breaks off. Then you have to go find another one. Um, and then eventually, yep, the mosquitoes. Um, and then eventually, you finally get it hanging between the two trees, um, and then it falls down. Okay. All right. So it is a process to hang the bear rope, all right? But what we do is this one goes over a tree, and then we have this hanging towards the pack and to another tree to tie it off, okay? But what I want you to think about today, this morning, we're going to be talking about the good things we do for God and the sometimes things we don't do that great, okay? So this is called a, I just forgot the word, pulley. It's chemo. Okay, this is called a pulley, and so when we do good things, Felix, go that way. We do good things. What are the good things we might do? We might work at open table. We might help a friend, right? We might do some good things, okay? But then we might do, Claire, go that way. We might not do those things. You're going to pull this way. Felix, come on. It's not a tug of war, okay? So we're going to go this way. Oh, okay, stop, Claire. But then we might do good things for God. We're going to go this way, right? Come on, Claire. We do good things, okay? We help others, but then sometimes stop. We argue with our parents or our siblings, right? Okay, stop. So life can be a back and forth, right? Are we good all the time? No. Are we bad all the time? Never bad. Sometimes not doing the right stuff, okay? But sometimes we're good, and sometimes we have more trouble. All right? What stayed constant in this example? The pulley, right? The pulley is like God. The pulley doesn't change. God loves you no matter if you're all the way this way or if you're all the way this way, right? This stays the same. God loves you no matter what. Now, we want us to move in this direction, right? But sometimes it doesn't go that way, okay? But what the important message is, God loves you no matter what. Will you guys pray with me? (laughs) Dear God, thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for being steadfast and for holding us tight to the tree, tight to the place where we need to be loving us no matter whether or not the limb breaks, whether or not we have to try again. You always love us. And for that, we know and we'll go out into the world and share your love with others. In your name we pray. Amen. I am delighted to be here with you again today. It is my joy and really my privilege to be able to worship and open God's word to you this morning. The first reading comes to us from Psalm 145. Beginning with verse 8. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and God's compassion is over all that has been made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power and make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all words and gracious in all deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson comes to us from Matthew chapter 11.
But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he is a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends the lesson. May God transform understanding into action. When our youngest son was just a little guy, he wanted to be able to do the same things that his brothers, who were one and five years older than he, could do. He would try his hardest to reach as high or run as fast or build Legos as tall as his brothers. And most often, he wanted to do it by myself, even when his brothers were more than willing to lend a hand or offer unsolicited advice on how he might improve his game. But he would have none of it. I would find him face down on our living room sofa with tears streaming down his precious little cheeks. And as I took my place beside him, trying to offer comfort, he would be clear with his words, leave me alone. I would remind him that he didn't always have to do things on his own. We were all there for him, to support him, to encourage him, to show him what might be a more effective strategy to reach his goals. But at his young age, his refrain was, I do it myself. And there he would lie, face down, until we left him alone. And eventually, when no one was looking, he would gather what he needed to stand up and move on. It's not always easy asking for help, even when we really, really need it, especially when we think that we should be able to do what the big kids do, all on our own. But sometimes, Asking for help is exactly what needs to happen. In today's gospel, Jesus is reflecting on the religious leaders in the crowd that have gathered around him. 
They didn't like John, the bug-eating prophet who lived in the wild and dressed in the weird. They didn't like him, or they don't like him, because he breaks bread with the sketchy. He heals the sick. He welcomes the outcasts and whoops it up at weddings, making wine when the refreshments have gone dry. And while they would like to think of themselves as the moral, law-protecting militia, Jesus is well aware that they are really nothing more than a bunch of pious crab apples who just cannot find a way to accept who and what is before them. And he comes to the conclusion that there really is no pleasing him. Truth be told, those alleged protectors of the faith really didn't like what they really didn't like, what they really, really didn't like about John and don't like about him, whether they admit it or not, is that both John and he encourage the crowd, especially the self-perceived defenders of the faith, to repent and turn from their judging, loveless ways, to move beyond the letter of the ancient law and turn back toward the intent or spirit or heart of the law. Love, it all boils down to love. And that seems to really irk the religious leaders in the crowd. Gender equality, racial reconciliation, forgiveness of debt, acceptance of others not like oneself, whatever. Who has the right to tell them how the ancient law should be lived out in their community? Then, like now, when a crowd doesn't want to hear a difficult message, especially when they cannot deny the truth that is at its core, it's not unusual for them to begin slinging their criticism past the message to the messengers, first John, now Jesus. Who are these nonconformists anyway? What right have they? Leave the legal matters, the religious matters, the interpretation matters to us. We know better than any of you. But the truth is, they don't. And with their self-absorbed, exclusionary, and dictatorial pronouncements, the crowd is left wondering, what exactly are they supposed to do? Who are they supposed to listen to? What laws are they supposed to follow? Confused and saddened, they don't quite know who to believe, and how to move forward. Follow the ancient law with all its prescriptions that serve only pro to protect the elite in power, or turn around and follow the new way, the new path, the new law articulated and lived out by this wandering, one-man potluck organizer for all who hunger and thirst for something more. To all those who find themselves confused, frightened, and to be honest, exhausted by the tyranny of those who call themselves the keepers of the law, Jesus said, I see you. In this wackadoodle world 
filled with haters, with deniers, with those who are threatened by the good news you are called to live, the law defined by loving God, loving self, and loving others. To all you out there feeling like you are being called to something deeper, to move counter to the culture, against the grain of those in power. I see you, and I am here for you. You are not alone. You do not need to do this work of mine alone. Come to me, Jesus says, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens of a culture run amok. Come to me, all you who think the world is growing scarier day by day. Come to me, all you who are lying face down on your couches with tears streaming because you just can't do what you think you ought to be able to do in the middle of such chaos. Remember this, you are mine. You are yoked to me and to my way not to the ways of this wildly out-of-step world that you are part of. Yoked? What kind of old-fashioned, out-of-date word is yoked? When I think of yoke, I imagine some wooden plow instrument that leaves the animal in question bound in service with little freedom or choice. A horse, a mule, a donkey, a water buffalo attached to this instrument of labor, trudging alone and along, thinking about nothing except the water and food that will hopefully await at the end of the dismal day's haul. Like Eeyore in the Hundred Acre Wood, here I am, weighted down, pulling, pulling, shoulders aching, carrying all the weight of this load by myself, alone, tired, day after day. And that, my friends, is quite an image to juxtapose against the image of the gospel journey. And it is not the image that Jesus calls forth in this passage today. Jesus invites us to lay down that single yoke, the single beam and harness, that one that we carry all by ourselves, the one where we say, I do it myself. Jesus invites us to lay that yoke down and take up the double yoke, hand carved specifically to fit the neck and shoulders of the two who are side by side perfectly fit in order to avoid discomfort and pain. One animal alone in a single yoke can often pull somewhere close to its own body weight. However, when yoked together with another, that team of two can pull up to 10 times their weight, the symmetry, the balance, and even occasional rest, 
alongside. If the yoke we are wearing as followers of Christ feels too hard, too tight, too heavy, then we need to ask ourselves if we are strapped to a single yoke where we are doing all the pulling ourselves or if we're part of a double. If the yoke we are wearing as followers of Christ feels overwhelming and disorienting, we need to ask ourselves if this is the yoke that's been created for us. If the yoke we're wearing just doesn't seem to fit who we are and how we have been called to follow Christ, then we need to ask ourselves if we have picked up the wrong load. God has given each of us work to do. This passage is not about, eh, you have nothing to do, just go your way, it'll all get done. This passage is about there is work to do. And each day, every one of us chooses what load we are going to carry, and with whom by our side. The yoke is meant to be a tool of connection, not a burden of bondage. To accept Jesus' yoke is to resist the cruel and exploitative yoke of the empire around us and to work alongside Jesus as God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Mother Teresa said, what I can do, you cannot. What you can do, I cannot. But yoked together to the Christ and to one another, we, we can do something beautiful for God. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our Amen. Let us stand and affirm our mission statement that's found on the wall before you. Responding to the living God with a progressive voice and working hands, we are called to feed Christ's community in mind, body, and spirit. Let us continue by singing number 50 in the hymn.
You may be seated. As we come before God in prayer, I know that I am not alone in being thankful for the rain that was falling and hopefully will continue to fall on our parched, parched world. God is good. God is faithful. Let us pray. Holy God, we believe that you love us and are yoked to us always. Help us believe in you and praise you, even when it seems that you are distant, even when we refuse to hook our yoke to you. We give thanks this day for the rain, for the farmers who faithfully work the land and await your bounty. Oh God, be with them. Give them encouragement when the fields are dry and the fruits not set. For the good of our earth, our fields of growth, and our refreshing waters, may we work toward the benefit of this planet upon which we live. May we enjoy and delight in all that is part of summer. We also give thanks for cooling breezes, shady trees, and cool water on these hottest of days. We pray for the Canadian fires whose smoke fills our air. May they come to an end, and may those who struggle to breathe find respite for their lungs. As we head toward Independence Day, we pray for our nation as it struggles to be one nation under you. May we value your values of generosity and inclusion. May we value our neighbor and love them as we love ourselves. May we be yoked to one another in our work for justice and equity. And may we seek to love in all places and in all things. May we come to know justice in the dawn's early light. May our leaders preserve those values and govern with justice, mercy, and humility. We pray for the leadership of this land, for Joseph, our president, Gretchen, our governor, and those who lead this community of Lowell. Grant them wisdom, grant them courage, grant them a vision of your full and glorious reign. For the well-beings of all our loved ones on this holiday week, may we enjoy time together with family and friends. May we treasure each moment we are given. And again, we pray for those who will travel and paddle the boundary waters together. May they see you in all of creation. Yoked to one another, may they laugh, listen, and love, growing deeper in their faith, in their commitment to you. And for the grace of compassion, may we tenderly care for those who are sick, and for those who grieve. Today, we especially hold Shannon in our hearts. Continue to bring healing to her. Continue to guide her on the journey toward wholeness. Oh God, hear our prayers. We trust you for protection, healing, and comfort. Hear our prayer in the name of your Son, the Christ. Together we pray the prayer you taught your friends. Our God, who is in heaven, 
Blessed be your name. Your kingdom come. Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, you are invited to bring your gifts and offerings uh, to this table. And if you are watching at home, we encourage you to send your gift of love via the P.O. box that's found on the website. Let us give to God the gifts that are God's. Lord of life, you promise abundant life to all who live in the light of your love. We offer these gifts as a sign of our desire to share our resources for the common good and the restoration of your world. Use them to strengthen our unity and deepen our witness to your healing presence among us.
Let us sing together hymn number 22. So we sing the commission, is that correct? Okay. In the name of the one who is the source of all being, the eternal word and the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.